And we are back. Welcome to Fantasy Football Game Week 5. We have the first midweek set of fixtures this season. So we are going to build a team for those fixtures as well. And let's not beat around the bush. Game Week 4 was a complete disaster on the fantasy football front. Here is what we had. And it really was just a case of all the right teams, all the wrong players. You go for Salah as captain and Liverpool win 9-0 and he does nothing. City score four, De Bruyne does nothing. Manchester United's goal comes via Bruno Fernandes. Arsenal's goals come via Saka and Odegaard, not Martinelli and Jesus. Thankfully, the defence did okay. Raya getting six, James and Saliba getting seven. But if you had any of the Liverpool defence, you'd have got a lot more points than that. And then obviously the front two, who I really thought would have good weeks in Watkins and Tony both not even winning in their home fixtures against teams I would have expected them to get results against. So that is the thing about fantasy football. There was a comment in the last video saying, would it have not made more sense to go for Haaland and Kane rather than Salah and De Bruyne? And retrospectively, that would have been the case because if you'd have just had Haaland and Kane, you would have actually beaten this entire team with just those two players. So... Fair play to whoever put that in the comment of the last video. That is the whole point of these challenges. It is to see what different people come up with, see different people's opinions. And, well, as you can clearly see, quite frankly, my opinions on the weekend were absolutely shocking. What that means is, in terms of the winners of Game Week 4, it was everyone. Not a single person in the SO99 League didn't beat the best of Game Week 4 team, which is rather embarrassing. But hopefully we bounce back stronger this week. As proof of that, here is the league table. Bradley Rutherford now at the top of the league. And not too big a lead, but as you can see, lots of high-scoring ones there. A few 84s, a few in the 70s, a few in the 60s, and even in the bottom half, you will see that indeed absolutely everyone beat the best of Game Week 4 team that is obviously sat at the bottom due to the multiple point deductions. So well done to everyone. Um... I'm pretty sure most of you had either Haaland or Trent in some cases, or in most cases, you had both. So that would be the reasons why you got those points. And hopefully I'm going to do better this week. Let's see what I've come for for the best of Game Week 5 team. And as always, of course, we're going to start with the bench, which is slightly different. I've put a couple of different players on there. Uh, most notably, James Milner. He has been playing somewhat for Liverpool over the course of the season so far. He is also 4.5 million, which isn't the cheapest anymore. Um, there are some 4.4s available for you now in midfield if you want to go uber cheap on your bench but I've stuck with Milner and Andreas Pereira because they are both playing at 4.5 so for the sake of 0.2 million I think it's still worth having people that can play if you really want them to. As for the team itself I mean obviously we can't not go Harlem this time it's just sod's law isn't it that you go for De Bruyne and Harlem does everything and then this time I'm going to go for Harland and De Bruyne will do everything or Bernardo Silva or Foden or whatever. Not in a forest at home, and especially being at the first midweek game of the season, um, there is a definite possibility for Pep Roulette, as we like to call it, coming in this week. So I think any Man City player could potentially be at risk. I don't think Harlan will be. I'd be shocked to see Harlan be replaced by Alvarez off the back of a hat-trick, so that is why I've gone for him. And we shall see who plays, because there are a lot of players available for City, and you just never know when the games come this fast with Guardiola involved. As for the rest of the team, we will start in goal, and I'm going to go for Melier. I don't really see a lot of clean sheets out there this week. I think there's a lot of even games. We'll obviously come to that in the prediction video tomorrow, but I'm going to go for Melier in goal. The only real other option I would suggest is Edison, but I think a lot of people are going to want multiple City attackers due to their opponents. So Melier is who I'm going to go with in goal. You'll notice that I've gone for four at the back for the first time in a while, and we will start with Rhys James, who has had a fantastic start to the season, despite Chelsea not having the best of starts. They're up against Southampton. Another good opportunity for both a clean sheet and points at the other end of the pitch, which is why I'm sticking with him. Next to him, we are going to go for Carl Walker. We've dropped Cancelo back down to Walker to get a little bit more budget elsewhere in the team. Again, I think City have a good chance of a clean sheet. 
So I'm going to go for Kyle Walker just as the cheaper option to Cancelo. If you have or can afford Cancelo, I think, again, he is a good option for this week as well. But as I said, for budget reasons, we are going for Walker. Next to him, we are sticking with William Saliba. He's obviously got a star on his name because he's in the best team so far this season. Said enough times about him, why I think he's going to do so well. So still at 4.6 million, he is a fantastic pickup for every fantasy football team. And rounding off the defence, we have got Trent Alexander-Arnold. Only going for this because it looks like St. Maximan pulled his hamstring, scoring the incredible goal he scored yesterday. So if he is going to be injured, then I think it's much easier for Trent to not only get the clean sheet, but have a lot more joy going the other way against Newcastle. I don't think it's going to be easy for Liverpool to get the result against Newcastle. But yeah, combination of St. Maximan looking like he's injured and the fact that they've just won 9-0, I think Trent is a must-have for this week. Into the midfield, and we start off with Mr. Mo Salah. I'm still going to back him. I know a lot of people are going to be feeling a little bit doubtful after the fact that, like we said, it was 9-0 and he didn't do anything. But Newcastle have been playing Dan Byrne at left back. And if they're going to do that again, you just got to feel that Salah's going to rip him to bits. So it'll be interesting to see if they switch back to Matt Target for Liverpool. But... I think Salah is, as always, the most likely for Liverpool, and we have the funds for him. So I'm going to go Salah over Diaz. I think it's worth it, and we shall see what happens this time around. Next to him, we are going to go for Rodrigo, coming in for the first time this year. He, again, is in the best of team for the season so far. Just playing off the front or sometimes playing outright striker uh, for someone that cheap and proven record throughout his footballing career, I think... Up against Everton as well, the way Leeds have started. You could either go for him or Jack Harrison. Uh, I just think Leeds have played really well so far and those two have been the main players and Rodrigo has so far been the one getting the goals. So I'm going for Rodrigo. I know a lot of people have already got him in their teams, but I think he is the one you want as a cheap option this week. And rounding off the midfield, I am once again going to go for Gabriel Martinelli. Of course, like we've said already, you could go for Odegaard, you could even go for Saka. I don't think it really matters which one of the Arsenal midfielders you want at the moment. It's They're all playing really well, they're all contributing, and Martinelli, as it stands right now, is still the cheapest. 0.2 more if you wanted Odegaard, who has currently got himself into the top team for the season so far, but... Martinelli, of course, scoring, and he takes set plays as well. So that is why I'm sticking with him. And I am also going to stick with Gabriel Jesus. I don't think there's any reason not to. Aston Villa are under a massive amount of pressure. I think Gerard's job could be on the line in the next couple of weeks if results don't improve, and I don't see it improving against Arsenal. So I am going to stick with Jesus. And a slight surprise, this one may shock you, but for my final pick, I'm actually going to go for Jamie Vardy. He has a ridiculously good record against Manchester United. He's the sort of player I can see causing Martinez all sorts of problems. I know everyone's raved about Martinez, including myself, over the last couple of games. But from what I saw in the first couple of games where we did lose, I just think that pace in behind, I don't think he has it. I think Varane is going to need to do an awful lot of work on Vardy if Manchester United are going to do well. And... I don't know. I don't have a lot of confidence that Manchester United are going to beat Leicester, despite the start that Leicester have made to this season. And like I said, Vardy just has this really good record against Manchester United, really good record against good teams in general. So let me know what you think about that one. But yeah, there is definitely note for lots of other strikers. Mitrovic at home to Brighton, I think, is a good shout this week, despite Brighton's good start to the season. Potentially still going Ivan Tony against Crystal Palace, although the way they've played, I think they've done well. Ebrieze would probably be another good shout for the midfield if you can get him in. But yeah, I'm going to go Jamie Vardy and we'll see what happens. And that is going to be it for this week. As always, let me know down in the comments what you're going to be rocking for this week. And if you think that your team is capable of beating my best of game week five team, let me know by submitting it into the SO99 League. As always, every winning manager will be shouted out in the next video. Either submit your main team or make a new account to build a team just for this game week. 
And all that is left to say is if you enjoy this series, let me know by dropping a like, sharing it with a friend, subscribing and ringing the bell. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Game Week 5 predictions video. Thank you very much for watching.